What's up, Pandus? Peter Von Panda here. Hey, I ordered this diver's knife. I haven't had any real need for it. I'm not a diver, but I did see a video online that uh, kind of intrigued me, and I thought, you know what, Panda? You should get a diver's watch. So this one's called the Dragon Squama, not Shwarma. I do love beef shawarma, chicken shawarma, but this is Squama. Uh, it's a dive knife with a strap, and I got this one because, one, it wasn't Dragon and Squama. Uh, it wasn't that expensive. And it seemed to come with a lot in terms of uh, the accessories that most of these diving knives come with. So first of all, you get a little scabbard here. And let me just say quickly here, what inspired me to get this? You may have your own inspiration, but I saw a video online on YouTube of a guy kayaking and he saw a sea turtle caught with uh, like a net around him. And he grabbed the turtle, pulled him out, and then reached down to his calf and pulled out his diver's knife and cut the net away and freed him up. And I was like, man, the beauty of that is you're not carrying a knife in your pocket. I guess you could clip it to your waistband, but especially, you know, if you're moving around, being active, sitting in a canoe, sitting in a kayak in a lot of ways, you don't want something digging into your hip. And so the diver's knife seemed to make a lot of sense. You kind of keep it down low, but it's easy reach. And uh, especially if you're a diver, that <laughs> you are already in the know on that. But um, I can see for a lot of outdoor activities, especially when you're being very mobile and agile, um, you know, this could be really helpful. Now, I did notice that various people, when they buy them, kind of like these hard cases, these hard scabbard sheaths in the, on the soft one. And this one came with both. So I thought I'd give it a shot and try it out. It does have this kind of nylon Cordura like. Uh, it's pretty stiff. It's not inflexible, but it should keep uh, the blade from, you know, poking through and cutting. There's a little uh, uh, a grommet here on the end. There is a uh, nylon strap with a snap on it to kind of hold that in place. The top end is sewn over. It's a loop, so you've kind of have a double uh, double wrap, but this allows you to put like say a belt through uh, through it or something like that. There's also uh, some loops here, kind of like Molly straps on the back here, so you could probably connect it to you know um, the, the Molly attachments on your uh, you know tactical backpack or gear or whatever you have, and then uh, you it came with obviously already mounted in this plastic sheath. Now it's it's kind of interesting because. The sheath itself is really only this part, but it does have this extended lip um, and extended platform. And that is for, I think, kind of strapping it to things. So to give you these attachment points here where you could strap it down, and here they are. And I think this is, a, this is the stuff that you would use if you wanted to strap it around your, um, your calf or your leg. It is stretchy. Obviously, you can see through it there as I stretch it out. And so it probably would be pretty comfortable. You can cinch it down. And what you get is a loop that looks like it's about a foot and a half long here, 18 inches. Um, so you would probably, you know, uh, use it like this, loop it through, you know, kind of create that full loop. So you got that. And now you've got your kind of your standard re plastic release here. They're not that big, right? That's my thumb. This is the release. So absolutely, you could run, you know, and you're going to have to undo this, but you could run it through here like this, this loop, and then through here, and use another one to kind of strap it down. You also get these straps, and there looks like there are two of them, and these are heavier uh, nylon Cordura, and they look like they're about the same length, maybe about 18 inches long. So it kind of just depends what your application is. You know, I guess if you're putting it against skin, maybe a little um, the, the stretchier stuff. If you don't really care and you're trying to cinch it down on the outside of a wetsuit, maybe or something, you'd use the, the stronger ones or, or something like that. To be honest, I'm not a diver, so I don't know entirely. But I thought I would show you uh, the two different types of uh, cases here and then. Or sheaths and then you have uh, kind of a very distinct kind of like a uh, a holster of any sort it looks like this button releases the the knife out of it so yeah and what it what happens here is that this top part which kind of gets teeter-tottered up is actually holding the uh, the edge of the knife kind of holding the the knife blade down you know these these two tangs so when I push it in here it kind of snaps in place and those things go down so you have to push this up in order to get it out while it holds it in place for the most part, I can actually kind of force the knife out. Um, so I guess you don't have to press that button. It sure makes it easier to kind of pull it out. But in this case, I don't, I don't know if it's just maybe kind of the fit and finish, but if I push it in there, I can actually pull the knife out. I can kind of force it out. So um, 
you know, keep that in mind. It's not totally like child's proof, but there you push the pull the push the button down and the knife comes out uh, very easily. Um, I think it's called a Tanto style blade or Tanto style. You can see it's oiled up here. Uh, I think, you know, particularly when you're using the hard case and, uh, you know, it's a black blade. It's, you know, it's got a black finish on that and says Dragon and Squama. And then the sharpened edge obviously is silver and you've got a nice pointy end there. Um, you know, I'm not a big fan of the Tanto style blades. I like that you get a lot of meat. It's got a lot of metal in there. Uh, but they're kind of hard to sharpen. I mean, I guess they're not super hard, but you know, you've got to kind of sharpen one edge and then sharpen the other edge as opposed to kind of a rounded blade. You can sharpen the whole thing at once. So that's an issue to you, you kind of keep that in mind. You do have a serrated edge here, which is actually pretty sharp. Um, you can see here it's, it is like sharpened at an angle. So you should be able to kind of saw things as necessary. And then uh, the top portion of the blade right here is uh, not sharpened. So that's flat. And then you do have um, some kind of protectors here, you know, as you're cutting into something. And then you have a hole right there, and it looks like 550 paracord wrapped all the way around. So from a survival perspective, if you needed cordage, uh, you would have that too. But it should provide you, uh, you know, kind of a nice secure grip. And you can see here, that hole that's drilled there, there's one there, and there's another one down here. So there's three holes in the knife, uh, you know, which shouldn't sacrifice uh, any structure on it but should actually remove a little weight and then you have kind of a pointy in there um, and then it's just a single kind of overhand knot here for the paracord so it should be pretty easy to get out untie if you needed to so kind of cool knife right there um, and fits back in um, to the uh, to the sheath here and I think this is the way it went in before which it certainly fits and I think it might be able to go in either way let's see yeah so you can put it in either way um, uh, upon a little closer inspection my guess is that this little door here or the little trap isn't being isn't closing on the knife as far as it could if it didn't have this paracord wrap so if it was just the metal knife I, it looks like it's kind of the paracord is holding this edge up a little bit if it didn't it looks like it would actually fall further down because I can kind of press it down on the paracord and then it, those little tangs on the knife seem like they would have a tough time getting past that. So let's just take this out for a second here because I want to take a look at the the, the soft sheath and uh, it's going to go in here just like this and uh, the tip of the knife is right about there and see it's a nice nice fit and then this would close up and buckle up right there. Now. One of the things that I might actually prefer is this this loop here to be a little lower to kind of brace it up against these two stops right there because the knife is going to have a little bit of slide travel. It's going to expose a little bit of the blade. Not a big deal, you know, I mean, that's not necessarily the, the, the end all be all point. But, um, you know, if it were a little lower, it kind of secure it in place. But as it is, it kind of gives you a nice, easy ability to grab the knife. And in fact, with uh, the button kind of being oriented like this, I and being right-handed, if I were just to flip my thumb there, I could have my knife at the ready. So um, that's kind of cool, and it seems like uh, this is pretty nice. Even though I can find the tip, I don't have to worry about impaling myself on a soft sheath because this is definitely um, a seriously sharp knife. I mean, seriously sharp. I think it's pretty cool. If you need a diver's knife, you can certainly pick up a variety of them. I'm just impressed that you get both types of sheaths here. You know, some different types of attachments, some flexible, some non-flex or stretchy, stretchy ones. So I think it's pretty versatile for a lot of different occasions. And if you are a diver, I definitely think, man, you know, having a diver's knife makes a lot of sense. Especially after being sold on the, the beauty of that video, an outdoorsman saving a wild animal. So that was pretty cool. But if you're just an outdoorsman and you think having a knife of like this type is helpful, I can see that too. Either way. Dragon and Squama, Diver's Knife, Peter Von Panda, out!